so far you've discussed taxes and budget cutting, which are related to fiscal policy. What is your opinion of monetary policy and the role it's played so far in the economic downturn that's taken place? You know, I think a lot of our problems really started emanating, frankly, on the, on the monetary policy side with, with Richard Nixon and taking us off convertibility. And I think really that's where the source is. And if you look at the pattern of the United States since that sort of going off gold or demonetization of the currency, uh, you really find that, frankly, uh, our interest rates have been rising, more and more volatile. And then I think the big shocker occurred recently in October 1979 when they switched from an interest rate target uh, to a quantity target. And then you get the great deal of volatility. I think what we have to do, frankly, is return to guaranteeing the purchasing power of the monetary unit. And I think the easiest way of doing that is by going back to some bundle of commodities or one single one. Historically, it's been gold. And, and I think you should set the price of it uh, by allowing the market to do it, uh, not by letting congressmen or, or anyone else try to set the price of gold. Uh, very, very upset by uh, some people recently uh, wanting to impose their own judgments uh, instead of letting the market do what the market does best, which is price products. Art, you mentioned enterprise zones. Uh, could you explain what are they and why do you think they're important? Well, really, there's one group in our society or a couple of groups that have really missed out on the prosperity of America. And, and they've really been passed by. And that's the inner cities. And the, the real reason is because every time a person in the inner city makes some more money, uh, because of the needs test, means test, and income test, uh, they've lost their welfare benefits. And so therefore, it really has not benefited them to be more productive, more employed, et cetera, and raising their incomes. And, and what the president's proposed is making tax havens uh, in the inner cities. And one proposal I did about six years ago would any firm that locates in the inner cities has a maximum tax in its profits from that plant of 10%. Uh, likewise, in the inner cities, any firm that locates there that employs someone whose principal residence is also there. No payroll tax, either employer or employee, up to $10,000 a year income. Get rid of the teenage minimum wage, which we in Chicago used to call the, the, uh, the, the Black Teenage Unemployment Act. And then make sure you use building codes, regulations, restrictions, requirements to make sure they're not anti-economic development. And this is a bill that I think is being put through. And frankly, if those concepts remain, I think we'll find a, a major change in Art, the structure of universities. Excuse Sorry me. About. Art, you've uh, implied or said that monetarism is, if not dead, sick, and we should link ourselves to gold. Well, uh, gold is not dead, never will be, I guess, but it's uh, made us pretty seasick by going uh, up over $800 uh, an ounce and then under $300, and it's gone like a yo-yo versus any currency. How could you link a major currency to something that unstable? Well, what I, what I really think you're seeing with, with gold is not a problem with gold. What you're really seeing is a problem with monetary policy. When you, when you see the price of gold going from $35 an ounce to $850 an ounce, is your first thought to run down to South Africa and see what new types of mining technology they've developed? No, gold's the first refuge of the cautious. And when people get scared, the price of gold goes up. For If the Soviet Union invaded Poland, the price of gold would go through the ceiling. If, if a bad monetary policy is imposed, the price of gold goes up. Uh, when a new president's elected that people expect uh, that he will return to convertibility, I would expect the price of gold to come way down. And if you look at it, since Reagan's probabilities of being elected have increased, you've seen the price of gold tumbling, uh, harboring, I think, a, a major change uh, in the monetary policy of the United States and, and a return back to convertibility, which I personally think Ronald Reagan's going to do. Art, in fact, you suggested to us that tax cuts would improve the economy. So far, they haven't done it. Hasn't that surprised you a little? Not really, no. In fact, uh, literally the delay in the tax cuts, I think, is the, the real problem. Uh, you know, no one should delay those tax cuts. And, and you well, provided Are we going to have a bounce in July when we get the second stage? No, there's no tax cut in July. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a change in withholding, maybe. Uh, but, you know, the IRS does not discriminate between income earned in January and income earned in December. And the closer you get to December, the more efficacious it is for you to delay your income with, through a lawyer and accountant till January when you get another 10% cut. So what you're really doing is putting in a lot of incentives. That the other one, the, the energy decontrol, is providing another enormous incentive to postpone production. Payroll taxes, all those, but they're all postponing. They're not eliminating. And what you're going to see, I think, is late 83, 84, an enormous expansion of the U.S. economy. 83 will be the beginning of a, of a big expansion. What has the president done best, and what has he done worse so far? Well, the best one is getting that tax cut through. You know, we at least do have some hope. Uh, there will be a change in the incentive structure of the U.S. Decontrol of energy, phenomenal. Uh, proposing enterprise zones, which, which I think are a real serious great. Uh, I think one of the worst ones is being at least conducive to allowing quantitative restrictions on Japanese imports. That doesn't make any sense to me. Aren't you at least a little bit responsible for the failure to control spending by putting so much emphasis on the supposed efficacy of the tax cut? Uh, just the reverse. I think it's the people who've been trying to control spending before tax cuts 
that are really responsible for the huge increase in spending. But the markets are scared by the deficit, aren't they? Oh, I think I am, too. Deficits are a consequence of bad economics. They're not the cause of bad economics. And the only way you balance the budget is by lowering unemployment and lowering interest rates. And you don't do that by raising taxes. Period. Thanks very much, Art Laffer, a man who clearly has kept his own faith. Thanks to our panel, and I hope you'll be back with us again next week when my guest will give us his refined view of the crude and shaky world of oil. William Randall, the top energy analyst, will tell us a bushel about OPEC and whether he thinks you should now be prospecting for black gold. It should be more fun than a barrel of Saudi Arabian light. Meanwhile, this has been Wall Street Week. I'm Louis Rukeyser. Good night. <laughs>